Duba Duba Duba. Greetings, my friends. Welcome. You are tuned to the EIB Network and the Rush Limbaugh program. We've got three full hours of broadcast excellence straight ahead for you. And boy, do we have, do we, have, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, the Democrats have opened the door and hit themselves in the nose. We've got exciting news on two exciting senators of the Democratic Party, John Corzine of New Jersey and Christopher Dodd of Connecticut, all involving stock scams. And, oh, wait till you hear the Dodd news. I ran across something last night on the Internet, a website. Guess who authored the legislation liberalizing all these accounting rules? Chris Dodd. Chris, he had Republican co-sponsors, but he was the impetus, and he got all the campaign contributions from all the accounting companies that are being investigated now. I got an 11-page report here, folks, off the Internet last night. I was doing work for you and myself out there. Christopher Dodd. Is it any wonder we haven't heard him publicly creaming all these accounting companies and, uh, and, and, and investment companies as well? Because these accounting rules were liberalized in the mid-90s with legislation sponsored by Dodd in the Senate. I'll go through this. It's quite lengthy. And I've, I've got a, I still haven't pared it down, edited it down. And uh, we got the Corzine news as well. I mean, we are bursting at the seams here. This program will not be contained today, ladies and gentlemen. So sit tight, strap yourselves in, and prepare for all three hours to be... Um, used here in getting all the information out. I want to, I want to uh, also, I know many of you are sitting on the edge of your chairs waiting for an update from San Francisco on the adedictomy story. There is no news today. As you know, the judge has a stay in the case until Friday. And there, there, we, we scoured San Francisco news sources today. There's really nothing new out there. Uh, we left this story yesterday, um, you know, adedictomy may be the, the wrong term for what's happened here. I mean, that, that's the ultimate aim. But what we may have is a part of dic- a part of dictomy. Yeah, because what we've got is this exchange operation is not complete out there. And they ran out of money. And I, I mean, we don't know to what extent or at what stage. But we do know the patient was left hanging. And, of course, they're not going to pack it in out there. Little Klaus Nomi lingo. Um, they're going to keep going on this because I, you've got to finish the operation, but they want other people to pay for it. I have to share this email with you. This is from a, sus- a subscriber at Rush 24-7. I saw this today, and it just stopped me dead in my tracks. Dear Rush, I was unable to work in my business for over six years because of a genetic lung disease. I was given very little chance to live, and I was on oxygen to survive. And during those years, the only activity I looked forward to each day was driving through the hills in Tennessee on back roads, listening to Chet Atkins tapes and Rush Limbaugh live, followed by our local show here in Athens, Alabama, with Sean Hannity. Now, although your political views to me were just common sense, ideas that I and my family grew up on, your views of life, and how to live it were what really kept me listening. You'd say, you can be whatever you want to be. Well, I knew that was true in the sense that you meant it, but I wanted to be alive. And I'd already been told by the best doctors that I would not be in a year or so. However, your inspiration gave me the incentive to do something about my condition, even if it was futile, at a time when I had decided that the doctors were right and I should resign myself to just coast on out of here. Anyway, the bottom line is that years of searching and learning turned into what became a new life for me on my 14-year-old daughter's birthday in 1996. I was given a double lung transplant, University of Alabama Hospital, Birmingham, and since that time I've gotten off disability. And as far as I know, I'm the only double lung transplant recipient to have gotten completely off disability. I went back to work at my barbecue business, and I even built another store this year. And I'm able to do this because of some great doctors, a grieving family, and you, sir, for planting a seed in my brain over ten years ago that I could be anything I wanted to be. And I am. I'm alive. Signed, Jack Witt in Athens, Alabama. P.S. If you ever want the best, parentheses, I know what you say about the Kansas City stuff. In parentheses, 
barbecue in the world, let me know. And I'll send it right on, vacuum-packed and ready to easily heat up on the house, of course. So I wrote him back, and I don't have my response in front of me. It wasn't very long, but I told him that um, his email note had made my day, and more than that. And I said, but you know, do not forget to credit yourself, because you did this. You and your doctors did this. It was your determination and commitment that did this. I mean, it's, it's very nice that you want to uh, credit others, but you did it. I mean, whatever it took, you had it in you to do. And I said, and I would love some of this barbecue. And I gave him an address to send it to. And I said, and send a bill. Uh, because you, like everybody else, deserves to get paid for what you do, especially now. So I hope I get this barbecue pretty soon. When I do, we're all going to have it here. And uh, then I'll report back as to how it compares to Kansas City Barbecue. So, uh, and, and, you know, the subject line, he's a subscriber to the website. He, he sent this in on the super secret subscriber email address, which you can only get if you are a subscriber. And the subject line of his email is, I live because of your inspiration. And that's, you know, that's, that's humbling, actually. <laughs> but um, he lives because he decided to take control of his life and not believe what some other people had told him. Whatever made him do it, he had it in him to do. And that's what he must never forget. You must never forget that, Jack. Now, this um, this email reminds me, I've, I've been debating whether or not to mention this because, um, well, it's, it's, it's something that's old, although it's available now in pay-per-view. My wife and I saw... By, quite by happenstance, so we, we have a bunch of DVDs at home, and we watch movies at home, and rather than go to the theater, I have crowd phobia and a number of other things in there. Um, and we grabbed Vanilla Sky, Cameron Crowe movie with Tom Cruise, uh, Penelope Cruz, uh, Cameron Diaz. And we had heard that it didn't do well, it got panned and all that. We watched it, and were mesmerized by it. I mean, just... Totally, Miz. We're going to watch it again and again. There are so many. And you know, I know why this movie was panned. And I know why certain people didn't. I'm guessing because it involves cryogenics. And therefore, there's a science fiction aspect to it. And, if, and you can get sidetracked by that and miss the whole point of the movie. It's not about cryogenics. It's just a vehicle that is used to tell the story of the movie. Uh and it's about exactly what Jack Witt is writing about here. It's about, here, here are the major themes of this movie. But, and there are, I, I, but there are more than this. And it's, I think it's amazing this thing came out of Hollywood. You control your life. Nobody else does. You contr you, it, your life is what you want it to be. You are not a victim waiting for things to happen to you, and then you've got to deal with it. You control what happens to you. Life cannot be pleasant or even thrilling all the time. There are going to be downs. There are going to be lows. And you've got to have those, otherwise you'll never appreciate the highs. You'll never appreciate the ups. One of the most amazing things in this movie is how disrespect of women in this country takes place. And it is criticized in this movie. It is profoundly criticized. If you get it. I mean, and I, we, we um, you know, when, when it started, we after about the first ten minutes, we looked at each other. You want to keep going with this? My wife asked, because I looked over, she looked kind of bored. I said, I'm intrigued by this. She said, I am too. So we, we, we hit the, uh, the pause button, which resumed play. And I couldn't, it's two hours and 16 minutes, and I don't know where the time went. It is just one of the most amazing, it is deep. It, I mean, the, the, the thought that went into producing this movie and the organization that it took to keep it and put it all together the way it is. I mean, from the opening, and there are no credit rolls at the beginning. I mean, you watch this from the opening second uh, if you want to get it. And it's on pay-per-view right now on cable, direct TV, and all that. And it's out now, it's in DVD and cassette. But it's, it's, it's an amazing it's an amazing movie, but it isn't easy. I mean, it's you can get sidetracked, as I say, by the science fiction. You get sidetracked by a lot of things. 
Um, but the lessons are all there. And for this thing to have come out of Hollywood is just amazing. Don't get sidetracked by the fact that Tom Cruise is in. I'll tell you something else about this. Everybody that acted in this movie had, I mean, everybody had to work so hard that you can just tell if you watch this. I mean, the, 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 the amount of, and, and for Tom Cruise, who is a leading man with the good looks and all that, the things that he allows as an actor in terms of how he is portrayed and how he looks in this movie, that's pretty gutsy if you ask me, given that he's a pretty boy and a you know, good-looking guy and all this sort of stuff. He's not for much of this movie. In fact, his face is hidden in much of it for reasons you'll see if you take the time to watch it. When I read this note from Jack Witt, um, it just it brought back all those memories about, about the movie. And, and the reason the movie resonated with both of us is because it does reflect our personal views of life. That you, everything you do is up to you. You know, I've often said on this program, most of the obstacles that people have in front of them are placed there by themselves. The reasons you think you can't do something, most of those reasons are reasons you've created yourself. You may blame others, but if you stop and think about it, i give you one simple one, and I've cited this all the time. Let's say you live in a small town and you're, all your family is there. It's the case with my uh, upbringing. And you want to stay there. That's fine, but small town, who knows what opportunities aren't there. You have just put an obstacle here in, in front of you, but if you want to stay there, that's fine. That, there's nothing wrong with it, but... There's a lot of opportunity in the world, and you've got to go out and get it. It's not going to find you. You control your life. You have to get the obstacles that are in front of you out of your way, and you can if you just... Re and this is the whole point of conservatism, too. It's not pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and being selfish and self-interested. and self What it is about being self-reliant, and it is about realizing that you have much more potential than you even know. And old Jack Witt here learned it. It's not about what he wanted to be. He just wanted to live when doctors were telling him he had no chance. And he's alive now. You talk about removing an obstacle. I mean, if there's evidence that it can be done, it's in this email note from Jack Witt. So, Jack, thanks again for the note. As I say, you um, made our day here at the EIB Network. Let me take a quick time out, my friends, and we'll be back and continue with all the rest of the program right after this. Insider information you can legally act on. Rush on the EIB Network. Uh, hang on there, folks, waiting for something to print. Come on, I love these faster than life printers that aren't. Here it is. Dear Rush, <clears throat> I believe the medical term adedictomy, referring to a sex change operation, is a joke. Somebody is pulling your leg. 